Hello everyone, this is going to be a fairly quick overview of how to use Incarnate, the UI and what some of the features are. The plan is to do more tutorials and walkthroughs like these for Incarnate as well as for other programs that we mention on the channel. So if you're watching through this and you see something a little different or you want us to dive deeper into a certain aspect, let us know in the comments down below. Also make sure that you subscribe so you can see more tutorials and other content from us in the future. And we will be putting timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip ahead to just certain parts of the video that you want to watch, you can do that. But we do encourage you to watch the whole thing. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so you've created your account and you've logged in and you will end up on this page. So you won't have this text here. This is because I have some already created maps in a folder that I've created. But basically when you create maps, they will appear on this page. You can put them in folders, as I mentioned. And then if you go to this Explore tab, you can go see um, maps that other people in the community have created. And if you like those, they will appear here as well. But the point of this video is to show how to use Incarnate, how to make a map. So we're going to do just that. So once you click on create a map, you're going to be able to select from different styles here. The first one, this is in beta at the moment, but you can create battle maps. So these would be super zoomed in, basically grid battle maps, as you can see from some of these examples. Um, this is in beta again. I believe you can access this if you have the free version. It's worth noting that uh, I am doing this on the pro version. I do pay for the pro version, uh, but I believe you can do this on a free account as well. But again, this is something that's in beta. So we're going to be doing the fantasy world style, but let's have a brief look at these other styles here. We have fantasy regional HD. So these are kind of more high definition assets. Uh, that are more appropriate for kind of zoomed in scenes like a city or a region or that sort of thing as you can see in some of these examples. We're going to do the fantasy world one but again let's take a look at these others here. Uh, parchment world, this is pretty much fantasy world but with a bit of a parchment filter on it as well as a different asset set that looks good uh, on that sort of parchment style. And then fantasy regional classic, so a little less HD than the HD one as you might expect. A uh, little bit more zoomed out areas, but still kind of regional and more in sort of the classic uh, incarnate asset style, I guess. So we're going to se select Fantasy World and we're going to hit Choose Style. So you can select your resolution and aspect ratio here. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to keep it on the default settings. You can do, of course, landscape, portrait, square, or uh, any sort of custom aspect ratio that you like. And you can up the resolution if you want to. Just keep in mind that the higher the resolution and the more assets you pack into your map, uh, the harder it's going to be performance wise on your machine. So if that's a concern for you, I'd say just stick with the default or even 1K if you need to. So if we create a map here and jump in. All right, so we have some tabs along the sides, which are basically our different tools. We have our save button down here. We have our menu up here to be able to save again if you want to uh, export. There's a recovery feature, which I have not used, but uh, that is good to note. And then return to your maps as well again after you've saved. Um, and then some other kind of assorted options. You also have undo, redo, and a change history. I can't click on these at the moment because I haven't done anything in the map, but pretty straightforward. Undo, redo, and you can uh, click on this to kind of see all your recent changes and go back to a certain point if you need to. Uh, all right, so the other options here are all going to change based on which of these tabs in. When we hop in, it's going to start us off on this tool because this is the terrain tool. So we have all of our different shapes here. We have edgy, circle, grid, all of these other shapes. Um, this is kind of going to be the default one because it gives you sort of nice, natural looking terrain. So if I paint this onto the map here, you can see it kind of has these nice natural edges to it. And it gives it a little bit of a, a sort of coastline on there. But you can also, uh, again, make it in different shapes, but uh, specifically make it on the grid. So there is a grid tab on the side and we'll cover that later. But basically, if you want to specifically make all of this on a very um, distinct grid, you can do this and you can actually place and remove terrain uh, on that grid. And again, there's a way to make that visible, but we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later. So if we go back to this guy here, you can also subtract, of course. So uh, here is our brush size. As you can see, it made a little bit smaller for subtract. You can tick it up or down like this. You can drag back and forth on here. You can change the number and you can change the slider. So <laughs> pretty much any way that you want to do it. Uh, I know various you know editing platforms like Photoshop and things like that use kind of different styles of um, 
you know, shortcuts for doing stuff like that. And this basically has all of them. So whatever you kind of are familiar with, uh, you can continue doing in Incarnate, which is cool. And then this option is here specifically for the edgy shape. And this is the feature size. So this is kind of how fractal this is along the edges. So if I turn this up, for example, let's turn it up a little more and I draw this, you'll notice that I'm on subtract mode, but you'll notice that that sort of fractal edge is much uh, bigger and I can change that again. Smoothing, pretty straightforward. It's on by default, just smooth is the edges. Smooths the edges, smoothens? I don't remember how English works. Smooths the edges, that still sounds wrong. Anyways, you get the point. Uh, if you turn it off, it'll kind of just keep it more fractal and, and geometric, it won't do any of the, the smoothing or smoothening, I don't know, who knows. Um, all right, so. Uh, let's go back up to this tab here. So this is select the select tool. Uh, and again, if you mouse over these, you'll see the name and also the uh, uh, hotkey for them. So for this one, you can toggle basically the different kinds of things that you want to select. It's on everything by default, as well as layers. So uh, again, if, if you've used any sort of other editing program and you're familiar with layers, uh, you can do that here. But basically, you can place assets and things on different layers and then choose to only select them within a certain range. Um, you can see your layers over on these side tabs here. There's the layers tab. Foreground is gonna be uh, for stuff on land, basically. Background for water. And then you can create different object layers, which we'll see more of. Um, there's also this shadow uh, customization option. So for some of the assets that have shadows, this is sort of a global customization. And then the color filter uh, option here. So if I tick this, we will get these presets. And so uh, you can actually see that the parchment one is in here as well as a bunch of others. You can make it black and white uh, or whatever else you want to do. And then you can change the intensity. So if you're wondering why this wasn't quite black and white, it's because the intensity here is only at 50%. So if I put this all the way up, it will make it completely black and white. Uh, so again, you can create um, kind of a different feel, different look if you want to, um, or you can just kind of jump in with the presets from those styles. So I'll take this off again, just to go back to normal. Uh, objects as well. So there aren't any objects at the moment, but this is kind of, uh, we'll show you this when you're in this window. And these layer and scene settings tabs will stay here. This last one will change out depending on what you've clicked over here. So let us go now. We looked at the mask tool. Let us go to the brush tool. So this is how you're going to sort of paint on uh, terrain, essentially. So, well, not terrain, I guess this is terrain, but how you're going to paint on the uh, coloring on top of it. So you have your foreground layers, background layers, uh, foreground more for land, background more for water. A lot of the same options here with the shapes uh, and brush size, as well as uh, opacity and softness, again, for the brush. So. Uh, and you have some of these options over here, many of which are up at the top as well. Although the, there usually are some other options like the offset and rotation here. So if I click here uh, on the catalog, I can also hit F. It will open the big texture catalog. Uh, again, you might not see all of these if you have the free version. And then depending on which style you picked, in our case, we picked Fantasy World, it will sort of toggle these by default. But if you do want to um, include the ones that weren't included. So for example, these, I can toggle that and they will they will pop into the map. So, oops, I will go back to just Fantasy World for now. Let's select this darker green and then we can sort of paint it on to the map. Uh, so let's make this brush a little bigger. We'll kind of leave it with a bit of a sandy edge and do that, perfect, okay. Uh, and then again, this is on the foreground. If we wanted to change the water in the background, we can go in here. Here's some different water. This is kind of a brighter one. And we can paint on this sort of lighter watercolor in the back if we wanted to. So I'll undo that for now. Um, all right, let's go to the next tab. So this is the stamp tool. These are basically your assets. So this is gonna be mountains and trees and buildings and all sorts of other things. So very much like the uh, textures, uh, there is a catalog here. Uh, so yeah, let me let me start here. So if I open this, uh, there's a few custom assets that you can see here that I brought in, as well as all of these other ones. And there's even more that are selected for that you can select for other things. Um, but basically, some of these you'll notice uh, have a little number in the corner, whereas some of them don't. The ones that have a number in the corner are um, sets. So they're basically, they're gonna kind of have that look, but there's gonna be different variations of the same thing. And that goes for a lot of things here. So like these little houses or these little trees or mountains like this. 
And basically, if I select one of these, um, it's going to kind of be the stamp that I have here that I'm able to place. Uh, random stamps is selected by default, but basically what this means is that if there is a set like this, as I go through and place a mountain and then place another one, it's gonna randomly cycle through this stamp so that there's some variation. Uh, it's worth noting, of course, that you can put these on different layers. So these are on layer one, for example, by default. And if I open this tab, we'll now see that layer one here has the three mountains. And of course you can create uh, stuff on whatever layers you like in a way that uh, kind of makes sense for how you wanna build your map. There's also radius. So radius and density down here, as well as up here, it actually says area, but this is in fact radius. So if we make this bigger, we can kind of see that there's like a bit of a brush. These are pretty big mountains, so let me make these a little smaller. And then density. So if I turn the density down, there's not quite as many. And then I can just sort of drag these across the map and it will put them in there. This looks a little weird for mountains, but obviously uh, that would be a good way to put down um, trees, for example. Um, so let us maybe do this, put in a couple more mountains, a little bit of a mountain range. And then if I go here and we select uh, these trees, um, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, maybe we'll make these the tiniest bit bigger. We could put in a nice sort of uh, forest like this. Cool. Um, yeah, so again, there's tons and tons and tons of different assets that you can go through. Uh, but this is basically how you add all of those to your map. You'll select it and you can kind of stamp them on that way, either kind of singly by themselves. So if I get rid of this, just one at a time if you want to, or with uh, brushes, which is awesome. So our next tab here is text and pretty straightforward, pretty much like every other text editor. You got your fonts, you can bold things, uh, you got your colors and shadow and that sort of thing. And uh, if you click onto the map here, you can place it down. And then if you um, type in the text box here, you can change what the text is. And you have kind of more of your options down here with opacity and curving things and spacing and color and all of that fun stuff to be able to um, put text onto your map. So let's just type island here, perfect. And then if we go to the selection tool, we can move this around. And of course, while we're in the selection tool here, if we want to move around the assets that we place down, we can do that. If we want to select some of them, we can do that. And then of course, this is where layers would come in handy. Maybe I want that forced on a different layer so that I can move these mountains around without having to select, without selecting all these trees or everything else by accident. All right, so the pathway tool. So this is kind of a neat little tool. Um, especially kind of for bigger world maps like this. Basically, it just allows you to create little paths. So you can do them in different colors uh, and you can make the line different. I'll just do this little path along here. There we go. Uh, and again, I can rotate it and move it around if I want to. Um, but yeah, it basically just make, lets you create little um, sort of path lines like this, which can look quite good on a big uh, map. Uh, we also have the note tab here. So this is a little bit of a weird one, but some people might want to use this kind of as they go along and get ideas. Uh, these are gonna be hidden. So if you uh, share this map and stuff like that, uh, or even if you change tabs here, uh, they're gonna disappear, but it's kind of just for your own reference. You can place down little notes. So let's say there's gonna be something in here and you can give it a title and uh, some description and save it. And then there's a little note for yourself. Again, a bit of a, a bit of a strange feature because when you when you tab away, uh, those disappear. But just kind of for your own reference, as you're building a map, it might be uh, a nice little way to uh, make notes for yourself to remember things. The last one here is the grid tool, uh, and so by default it is off. If we hit show grid, we will get a bunch of options here. So we can uh, by default it's on the isometric square here. We can also make it actual normal squares if we want to, or hexes. We can change the size up and down, uh, and we can change the color and the, the sort of shadow of these lines and things like that. And again, uh, there's quite a few options up here, and there's even more down here. And of course, if you change these, and we go back over to this tool on the grid, uh, as you can see, we add, it will place it sort of according to this new grid structure, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, so if, if you want a grid for kind of figuring out distance uh, or, you know, I guess that's generally why you'd use it, figuring out kind of uh, how far things are across on your map, um, you can do that. 
The other uh, thing that we have here isn't a, isn't a tab really so much as, as a tool, uh, but panning and zooming. So being able to move around like this, zooming in and out. So this is just with my mouse wheel or with the slider up here or with the 101 other ways to, uh, to toggle things back and forth, uh, as well as fit screen. So if I zoom out or kind of move things around weirdly, I can hit fit screen and that will kind of attempt to fit it to the screen and bring it back to center. Um, yeah, so that is kind of a basic overview of all of the tools and things. Uh, I could definitely go way deeper into all sorts of this. I can also do, you know, some examples and more of a tutorial on how to do particular things with the platform. Uh, but hopefully if you've kind of opened it up for the first time, uh, this is helpful to you. And, uh, you know, I can make some more videos, more tutorials going forward to help people with more specific things. So if you have something that you would specifically like to learn about Incarnate, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments and uh, I will put together some more videos as part of a tutorial series on how to make maps. Um, they're updating it all the time and adding new features, which is awesome. So there's a lot of things that I am still learning as I go as well. Um, but I do have some experience in making maps for my own campaigns and that sort of thing. Uh, so I would love to uh, make some of those tutorials to share with you guys. Um, so, you know, I'm just playing around with things in the background here, make little rivers, things like that. These don't look the most natural, but anyways, there's, there's lots and lots of different things that you can do with this. Uh, so like I say, let me know if you want to see something, uh, if you're curious about something, and uh, I will make some more videos for you guys in the future. But that is all for now, and thanks for checking this out. Subscribe if you have not already, if you want to see more content like this. And uh, we have some big plans for this channel, so we are excited to have you along for the ride. Uh, but yeah, that is it for today. See you guys.